Hi there, Chris here from IELTSadvantage.com. Welcome to our new studio with our new Jamboard. Uh, so we normally, we used to make these live lessons about three times a week. We moved to a new studio and a new office. And um, so that's why we haven't really made that many videos over the last couple of weeks. But now we've got it all set up, we're gonna make um, a lot more live content and there's a lot of exciting things coming up in the last part of 2018. So this lesson is all about how to find real IELTS practice tests and how to use them, how to actually use them to help you get the scores that you need. And um, this is a question that we get again and again and again. So this, is, this video is really going to help me because anyone who asks this question in the future, I'll be able to just send them all this stuff. Again, because we have the Jamboard, we'll be able to show you exactly where to find things online and how to help yourself. Um, because I won't be with you um, during your preparation, I won't be with you on exam day. So this is really to show you how to become an independent student, find those practice tests, avoid the fake tests, and use them to help you improve your score. Okay, so rule number one, do not use fake materials. When you hear me say materials, I'm talking about the actual practice tests. Those could be online tests, or they could be books, or printouts, or whatever. Do not use fake materials. Why do you not use fake materials? Well, number one, you might get materials that are too easy. I, and I'd say about 90 to 95% of the materials that you will find online are fake. Okay, so if you have been using materials uh, to practice your IELTS test, chances are, if you don't know what you're doing, you're probably using fake materials. And number one, they could be too easy. What happens if you get uh, materials that are too easy? You'll do a reading test or a listening test uh, or a writing test and you'll ace it. So imagine you do a, a reading test and the reading test tells you that you're going to get a band eight or a band 8.5 and you need a band seven. And you think this is amazing, I'm ready for my test, I'm gonna book my test and you book it and you get 6.5 and you have no idea why you got 6.5. One of the reasons for that is you might have been using fake practice materials which are way, way too easy. Why are they too easy? Because these fake materials are created by people who do not know what they're doing. It takes many, many, many years of specialist experience before you're able to create real practice tests. And it's only really the people from Cambridge English that you should trust to help you with that um, or that to, to write those materials. Number two, you might get tests that are way too difficult. Um, so this is especially true for the speaking practice tests and the writing practice tests especially. I, I particularly see this for task one academic, so a chart or a bar graph or something like that, and task two writing. Task one academic, because people who are creating these that don't really know what they're doing, normally what they do is they add in way too much data and make the graphs and the charts and the pie charts and the tables way more complicated than they need to be. Also task two, they will talk about topics that not a lot of people know about. So one of the main complaints that you will hear about IELTS is uh, the test is unrealistic or the test is too difficult or you know, it, it's not really applicable to me. You'll get nurses and doctors saying, you know, why do I have to write about something totally unrelated to this? Most of the time, that's because you're using fake practice materials. You're using fake questions. 99% of the, ta the task two questions that you'll see online are not produced by Cambridge. They are fake materials. Um, so you need to be very careful. What happens if you use t uh, things that are too difficult? You will lose hope, you will stop um, practicing. You will not practice or you'll not do the test at all. You will not put in the work that you need to put in um, because you think it's way more difficult than it really is. Um, and it, task two writing, task one writing is not actually that difficult. It is overcomplicated by students and some teachers, but when you actually break it down, it is not actually that complicated. Number three, this is probably the worst one. It, it can be totally misleading. Um, so you'll often get things like um, you'll get a task two question that is not in the same format as is normally asked on the task two paper. So I'll get emails every day from people saying, um, I've no idea what this question means. I've never seen this before. Um, am I going to be able to answer this on the real paper? 
95% of the time, my answer is don't worry, it's a fake question. Same for reading, same for listening. You might get the people who are putting these up on their websites that just really do not care about you and do not care about your results and they don't care if they are creating materials that reflect the real exam or not. One of the questions everybody asks when I explain this to them is why do people post fake materials on their website? Very easy answer to that is money. If you get lots of clicks on your website or lots of quick clicks on your YouTube channel, you make money from advertising. So these people are more interested in making money than they are actually helping you and you always need to be careful about that. But you don't need to worry because there are a huge number of real practice materials out there, both online for free or in books. And it's really, really important that you know where to find these, that it's easy for you to find them, and it's easy for you to get going with your practice. Okay, so how do I know if the materials are fake or not? So you need to be aware of this. So there are only four sources where you're going to get real IELTS practice materials. Number one, IELTS.org. If you go on there, they have a suite of different practice materials. So IELTS.org, just stick that in to your browser and you'll be able to have a look there. Obviously, British Council, on the British Council official IELTS website or your local British Council um, website. And the, if you register with either the British Council or IDP, normally they give you um, some practice materials when you register with them. And um, so the British Council, IDP, doesn't matter which one you choose, they're both the same, but they will provide you with practice materials and on their website, you will find um, practice materials there. Also Cambridge English, these are the guys that actually create the tests. So on their website, you will find lots of practice materials and their books also. Now, their books do cost money. I have no affiliation with Cambridge English at all. They do not provide me with any cut of what you buy or anything like that. Um, so what I'm about to say is not swayed by that. It is worth investing in their books, okay? So uh, many of you complain that you're failing the test over and over and over again. Why are you complaining about that? You're complaining because it really is costing you a lot of money, all right? Every time you fail the test, think about how much it costs you in not only your test fees, but your tuition, which it might have been a waste of time and a waste of money, traveling expenses, you might have had to travel to um, that uh, center and stayed overnight in a hotel or with family members. And also think about the loss of your future, your future job, your future studies, how much is that costing you? So when you put it into context like that, investing $20 or $30 in some practice books is not really um, that much money. It is, you know, I understand that a lot of people watching this video, 20 or $30 is a lot of money, but if you're watching this on the internet and you have a smartphone or a computer, probably means you do have 20 or $30 to invest in that. I don't get any of that money, but it is a good investment to, to get the practice materials that you need. So how do you find these? Um, very, very simply, you use Google. All right, so if you want to find practice tests from Cambridge English, what do you do? Cambridge English IELTS practice tests into Google. Even though I've, I'm making a video about this, I guarantee someone in the comments is asking, where do I find these materials? Google it. It's Google is your friend and will help you find them. Um, so if you went in here and first result, Cambridge English, download IELTS sample papers, download general training, all of these things, and you can download them. Um, let's say we wanted the British Council ones. Um, so we would just type in British, not British Airways, British Council IELTS. And let's put in Let's just try that one, because it's not working properly. But if we go into their site, uh, do, 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 wants to know where, select location, Austria, probably gonna be in German, or no. But you'll be able to find um, on this site, you'll be, I'm sure you'll be able to find prepare for IELTS, 
free practice activities and resources, free practice tests. You just have to look around yourself. Um, do not ask your teacher to do all this for you or email me and ask you to do all this for you. Everything you need is there for you and you just have to Google it and find it. Most of it, if you Google it, most of it is free. However, do not download paid for books online. Um, you're stealing, all right? You don't really want to pass your IELTS test while breaking the law at the same time. Okay, so, warning. Practice alone is not going to help you. Okay, so another thing that I find when students join my VIP course is um, we will do, when they first join, we'll chat to them and ask them, you know, why do you think you failed? And they'll say things like, I've practiced every single Cambridge test. Like I've practiced like hundreds of different tests and nothing is working. And what we normally say to them is, well, you're assuming the practice is going to lead to improvement when it does not in this situation. Practice alone does not lead to improvement. For many of you, you believe that in order to improve your reading scores, you just have to do 20 reading tests or improve your listening scores. Is that going to help you improve your listening score? No, it's not going to at all. The story I normally tell my students is I have a friend who grew up on a farm and his dad had an old car and he drove the car around the farm over and over and over again. And then when he went to do his driving test, he had practiced driving a car for years and he failed the test over and over and over again. The reason for that was, was he had no driving instructor sitting beside him, correcting him on his bad mistakes. He had a huge number of bad habits. And if you're just doing practice tests and you don't have a qualified teacher giving you feedback, or even worse, you've got an unqualified teacher giving you feedback or another student giving you feedback, then you're in a lot of trouble because you think that you're progressing, you're wasting time and you're not going anywhere, which is tragic if you think about it all the time that you're spending wasting on this and not really improving. Is practice important? Yes, it is important, but it's just one element of your preparation. So let me show you how you can integrate practice materials into your preparation. So how we do it on our VIP course is we identify a student weakness, okay? So we're just gonna take one weakness at a time. Imagine their weakness is paragraphing. Okay, so their paragraphs need, need some attention. So what we do is we identify that weakness and this is what you can do at home as well. And then you're going to learn about paragraphing. So on our VIP course, you would watch a video showing you exactly how to use paragraphing properly and exactly what to do. But that's not the last bit. What you would do then is what we call a mini failure. So this is basically the practice element of it, okay? So the difference between a mini failure and a failure, a failure is you go and do the whole test and go to the British Council or the BC or the IDP and, and you fail the test. And that's, that's, that's a, a big deal. A mini failure is where it gets controlled practice. So you're focusing on one weakness at a time. You're practicing that thing. So in this context, you're practicing paragraphing. You're learning what to do, and then you're writing an essay and focusing on that skill. You're focusing on that, um, on that, that mini thing. And you're going to do it quite well, but you'll fail to do it perfectly. Then what you need to do is get feedback. So you're gonna get feedback from someone who knows what they're doing, not another student not a, someone who calls himself a teacher who isn't really a teacher, someone who is an expert to give you that feedback on your work, okay? And then you're going to, you're going to improve and then you identify the next weakness and you go around in that circle. So first stage is identifying your weaknesses. Second stage is actually learning what to do. Third stage is the practice stage. Fourth stage is the feedback stage, which is probably the most important stage, but the one that many of you just don't have. And then you improve from that feedback. 
by taking action and working on your mistakes. And that's not just for IELTS, you can apply that to any single thing in the world to get better at it. We apply it in our business every single day. We apply it, I apply it in my life every single day. What am I, what do I need to improve on? How do we improve it? Try and do it, mess up a few times, get feedback from someone who knows what they're doing, and then we get better. And that's how you get better at anything. Um, it's not that complicated. As I always say, keep it simple. Um, so, practice alone is not going to help you. This is going to help you. Okay, so that's the end. That's how you find um, practice materials. That's how you don't use fake materials. That, and that's how you integrate practice materials into your, into your ecosystem, into the process of getting better at this thing. Now, I'll take some questions. I need a phone, though. So. Okay, so if you have any questions about anything related to IELTS, let me know and I will answer them for you. Everyone's just saying thank you, so I appreciate all the thank yous. Thank you, everyone. Um, good question from Hafsa. How to find practice tests to tell you your scores? So the reading practice tests and the listening practice tests it's easy for you to tell your own scores because you just correct your own work because the listening and reading, the answer is either correct or it's not correct. And they'll give you the answers in the back of the book or the back of the practice test. So reading and listening, you can practice by yourself. And today you can find out what score you would get if you did it, as long as you do it under exam conditions. Speaking and writing, you need someone who is not only an English teacher, someone who has IELTS examining experience and is, uh, is good at what they do and can give you accurate band scores. Um, so that's, that's obviously something that you need to pay for that's extra. Um, it's impossible for you to get that feedback for free um, you know, w without anything else. Um, let me see. Here's a good question. If you need practicing English language, we can practice together. Contact Mohammed at O. <laughs> okay, so Mohammed, be very careful about Mohammed. Mohammed probably wants to get on the phone with you and then offer to teach you um, for some money. So be careful about Mohammed. Don't go onto other people's uh, pages and live events to try and sell your stuff, Mohammed. Um, so let me see. Any other questions? Could you please guide me for enrollment in an online class? Yes, we have uh, course advisors who you can, give, uh, you can get on the phone with them and they can talk you through your different options. If you would like that, please send me an email and I'll set you up with them. Chris at IELTSadvantage.com uh, Chris at IELTSadvantage.com and we'll be able to set you up with that. We can't guarantee that we can help you um, because we only work with a very small number of students, but we can have a chat with you about it. Do you have an online class? Yes, send me an email about that if you want to join. Uh, I want to know more about this course. There is no course. This is just free advice on our um, page. Um, what do you call that screen you are writing on? It's called a Jamboard. It's by Google makes it. It's called a Google Jamboard. So you can have a look. Um, Google, Google Jamboard, and you'll find out more about it. Um, my IELTS score is 5.5, how I get more score doing that. Um, what to do for getting high scores in reading? Identify your weaknesses, do practice tests and identify your weaknesses. Learn how to improve those weaknesses. Do more practice tests, get feedback on, on your, your mistakes and then improve in that way. Is there any old test to practice? Yes, that was what the whole lesson was about. Um, Rewatch the lesson and you, you'll find that. Can I roll it with your class? Maybe, we only work with students who we think we can help. We don't work with students who have unrealistic ex expectations, for example, um, or students who just don't have time um, to study or students who 
don't want any feedback on their work or don't want to do any work. Um, but if you are the right kind of student, then we'd like to speak to you. So send me an email. Why one cannot do practice alone? Because like, would you learn how to drive a car on your own? No, you need a driving instructor to teach you. Why do we have teachers? You know, why do we have people to, to teach anything? There are a lot of things that you can learn by yourself. Um, but it's obviously much better if you have an expert teacher t giving you feedback on your performance. It's going to make it much, 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 much easier. Uh, if we are thinking our English is very weak, how can we overcome our mistakes? Most people who think that their English is very weak is not normally as weak as you think. Um, but get someone to help you identify your weaknesses, work on those weaknesses, and for general English, surround yourself with English, all right? Do something every single day where you are listening, reading, speaking, And writing. Think about how many different ways that you could do that every day consistently. Listening, listening to TV programs, the radio, to YouTube videos, to podcasts, reading, you know, any book, any magazine, any blog post, speaking, find someone online to, to exchange language with, or there's, there's thousands of different ways that you can do that. Writing, write on Facebook, write essays, write a blog, whatever you want. Um, the key is really to just get going and take action. Um, if you think about it, and, um, you're, never going to, you're never going to improve your language thinking about language. You have to actually do those things, um, and that's going to help you out. How can I master vocabulary faster? Okay, go to Okay, so let's go to my website. Okay, let's go to IELTS Advantage. Let's search for that one. If you go to the IELTS Advantage website, IELTS writing task one, task two, speaking, reading, listening, vocabulary. Click on vocabulary. No, not that one. Okay, and you get all the information you need about vocabulary. And if you click on this vocabulary improvement plan, it's a free PDF download that you can download on that. So if you go to IELTS, advantage and help yourself you'll find all that there so you can go to all of these things writing task one two speaking whatever you want you'll be able to find it there uh, okay so that's going to be everything for today guys I know that a lot of you have questions um, and I haven't answered most of those questions I do have a limited time today because we're still setting up our new office and our new team. But if you go to IELTSadvantage.com, you will find everything you need there. Writing task one, task two, speaking, reading, listening, vocabulary. Um, for example, if you go into writing task two, you're going to find basically everything you need for writing task two to help yourself. Pretty easy, just type IELTS Advantage in and you can get that. If you are interested in getting our help, joining one of our courses or services, feel free to email me, chris at ieltsadvantage.com and we'll put you in touch with one of our course advisors who will be happy to speak to you about your options. Thank you very much, guys. It was an absolute pleasure teaching you. I'll be back hopefully tomorrow um, with another live lesson. And if you've enjoyed this, um, Feel free to give us a like or just say thanks in the comments. Thanks very much, guys. See you again soon. Bye-bye.